Hello and welcome to Candid Conversation. 25th January 2016 marks the completion of 66 years of India's Election Commission. On the eve of National Voters Day, which is the foundation day of the Election Commission, we are joined by none other than the man who is at the helm of election management in India. You guessed it right. We are joined by Dr. Nazim Zaidi, Chief Election Commissioner. Welcome, Dr. Zaidi, to Candid Thank Conversation. Thank you very much. As CEC, what does National Voters Day mean to you and what do you think it should mean to voters? National Voter Day uh, is celebrated on the occasion of the foundation day of uh, the Election Commission of India, which was set up uh, on 25th January 1950, a day ahead of the India became Republic. It is an occasion to empower every eligible Indian voter. And therefore, it is an occasion when we renew our resolve to empower every uh, Indian voter. And uh, thirdly, this is the occasion when we thank millions of our uh, workers, officials, who work behind the scene and who conduct the elections in a very fair and free manner. But how will the National Voters Day be celebrated at the national level, at the state level, at the district level, and how many voter ID cards will be issued on that day? The National Voter Day celebration will start from uh, New Delhi. Uh, Honorable President of India is coming to uh, participate and uh, to come and inaugurate the National Voters Day. Then we uh, will organize simultaneous uh, functions at about 7 lakh uh, locations in the country where uh, every eligible Indian uh, voter newly enrolled will be handed uh, his uh, electoral photo I card and will also be given a uh, registration booklet this time which will contain his uh, do's and don'ts, his rights and obligation. Mm -hmm. Then the function uh, will take place at a state level where uh, governors, and various leading personalities will come and attend the function. Then it will also take place at every district level. And likewise, this will go down to every polling booth. As I mentioned, there are 7 lakh uh, locations where this function is taking place. Mm -hmm. This year, we did a new uh, function here at Delhi. We organized uh, what is known as Voters Festival or uh, Matadata Mahotsav. Yes. It was a huge success. All 35, 36 states participated. Uh, six uh, foreign electoral management bodies participated. Uh, there was huge attendance from uh, voters. There were a lot of uh, uh, cultural programs mm -hmm. to promote uh, ethical voting. Voting. Uh, there were uh, 26 state icons who propagate our uh, voter education program. They came and they participated, some leading personalities like cricketer Pujara and likewise. So it's a huge celebration all over the country. Dr. Zaidi, also the annual summary revision of electoral rolls has been completed. Uh, what is the size of India's electorate now and what is the breakup in terms of youth, women, men? Uh, yes, uh, uh, India has the honor of having the largest database in the world. In fact, uh, our uh, database is equivalent to population size of various combination of uh, continents also. Uh, so that is the significance. See, out of uh, total projected population of 129 crores, uh, we have uh, close to 85 crores voters database. That means to say 85 crore voters are on our electoral registry as on 1st January 2016. Uh, out of this, about 1.4 crores are the newly eligible voters of 18 to 19 years age. The breakup of the electoral database is uh, approximately 47% are women and 53% are men. It's a new year, so like it is the case with all of us, we make new year resolutions. What's the 2016 resolution for the Election Commission? Uh, this year, uh, we will uh, have two important results. I'm talking in the context of National Voters Day. One is the uh, inclusive and 
qualitative participation, which will mean that uh, we will try to bring all marginalized sections, all those sections of the society who have not been able to come on our electoral registry. And the second uh, resolve is that no voter to be left behind. The entire Election Commission of India will work around these two themes and slogans. What are the initiatives that the Election Commission has already taken up in the recent past or plans to uh, take up uh, in the future, say, for uh, ensuring that uh, the entire process of enrollment of uh, voters becomes simpler and easier in nature and the inaccuracies that we tend to find sometimes during elections and the electoral rolls are done away with? Interestingly, every year, uh, more than four crore people become eligible to be enrolled. And therefore, it is very necessary to evolve a process where the entire registration and enrollment is hassle-free, simple, and people have very pleasant experience with, uh, with the registration process. Uh, therefore, uh, what we have thought is that we should have the availability of relevant forms at multiple points. They could be our BLOs, they could be our electoral registration offices voter uh, registration uh, centers, uh, citizen service centers for those who do not have IT facilities and for those who have IT facilities for them the availability of forms is also on various IT platform mobile apps also. Then the second uh, part is where they can submit their application. So we have again created multiple points as I mentioned some offices and likewise now they can uh, make use of our new IT applications including mobile applications and the interesting fact is that uh, two three months ago we started uh, mobile application for enrollment and uh, in past two three months uh, more than 80,000 people have tried to Download enroll on it. our uh, mobile apps we are encouraging it and uh, we hope that this will become very very popular amongst uh, mobile users. The National uh, Voters uh, Services Portal has also been launched by the Election Commission. What was the objective behind it? Was it to reduce the problem of duplication in electoral roles and how successful have you been in uh, that objective? See, one of the objectives of uh, introducing National uh, Voter Service Portal is that the population is increasingly using IT applications. And uh, secondly, uh, voters have to then depend upon different uh, platforms to fulfill their services and informational contents. Therefore, uh, we try to integrate uh, possible appropriate information and relevant services to the voters at one platform. So this portal uh, caters to six services for, for a voter. A voter can enroll, a voter can search his name, a voter can search his polling station, he can search the name of the officials including his VLO and likewise. A very important aspect of uh, the electoral exercise is to ensure that the electoral process is easier for the voters and it is a pleasant experience at the end of the day. What is the election commission doing on that front? See, election comes once in five years. And therefore, it is our duty to create a very pleasant ambience at polling stations where people feel encouraged to come and cast their votes. If I may add here, oh, once in five years for general elections, but you're handling so many of them in a matter of you know months. But whichever election comes, generally it comes after uh, five Absolutely. years unless there is a That's premature a term of the assemblies. dissolution or by-elections. Uh, therefore, uh, the first thing that uh, we do at the polling station is that uh, we have introduced a concept of basic minimum facilities. Here we provide uh, certain uh, numbers of services such as ramps for physically uh, disabled people and for senior citizens. We provide electricity, we provide uh, drinking water, washrooms, uh, sh uh, sheds and several other facilities. Another thing we do at the um, uh, polling station is that we also introduce different queues for men, for women, for senior citizens. We also have introduced a mobile application for queue management. 
Chandigarh introduced uh, a mobile application to inform voters about the congestion at the uh, polling station in terms of queues. Therefore, people can manage their own time and adjust their own time to come to the polling station. I think these uh, um, uh, initiatives have uh, encouraged people. Particularly, I must give you the example of uh, recent Bihar elections. We monitored it very, very rigorously. Mm -hmm. And the, we are very happy to say that uh, Bihar State Administration played a very important role in providing basic minimum facilities at these polling stations. Because we insisted that uh, every polling station must have electricity, uh, now I am told that uh, more than 80 to 90 percent polling stations have electric connection. That's great news. Does the sweep three program of the election commission entail all these uh, voter friendly measures as well? Yes. Uh, as you would know, our sweep program has been going on for a few years. Gathering experiences from the implementation of our earlier uh, sweep we have now decided to launch a new generation of sweep which we call as sweep 3. Mm -hmm. uh, this sweep basically is a scientific and systematic uh, program. On one hand we work upon voter education, on uh, democracy, electoral uh, education. Then we work on voter awareness, we work on encouragement to voters to participate, ethical voting including. So on one side, we generate demand. But how do you walk that fine line between educating voters to vote and to exercise their uh, right to vote and ethical voting at the same time so that external influences are not there on voters? Actually, ethical voting is a very significant part of our entire uh, sweep. We want that voter should cast his or her vote without any external influence, which means without any uh, monetary or non-monetary inducement. And therefore, uh, we are trying to impress that our voter education, which will include ethical voting also, should be embedded in uh, various curriculums. We also want it to be part of our national literacy mission. We have also introduced that every newly enrolled voter will take a pledge. We have also made them aware that uh, indulging in unethical voting is an offense. Okay. Since you're talking about uh, voters' expectations, part of the expectations is also VVPAT, Voter Verifiable uh, Paper Audit Trail, which uh, you have s launched uh, in a phase-wise manner as per the directions of the Supreme Court. What's the status of VVPAT and what does this mean for the empowerment of the voter? Amongst various features whereby we uh, ensure the security of our electronic voting machines, one of the important aspects is the transparency of entire voting process. A voter needs to be convinced that his or her vote has gone to the right candidate, right candidate wherever he or she has pressed the button. And therefore, this issue has been going on for some time. And as you rightly mentioned, Honorable Supreme Court passed an order and we have introduced uh, voter uh, verifiable uh, trail. In this machine, uh, if a voter can see, he can read the serial number, the name of the candidate, and the symbol. And therefore, he or she can be assured of uh, his or her vote having gone to the right place. Initially, we, manufact we got 20,000 machines manufactured. We have been using it for past two to three years and uh, reasonably successfully. Now recently we have uh, placed orders for uh, additional 70,000 uh, uh, VVPATs which will be used in all five uh, uh, state elections which are uh, due in few months. Mm -hmm. We have also raised uh, our demand for additional funds. Our uh, objective is that in 2019 elections we should be able to use VVPAT all over the country. You referred uh, to the controversy which is generated every election about uh, the EVMs, whether they are safe and whether they are untamperable, whether they are tamper free. Would you like to set uh, all doubts to rest once again? We have said it emphatically on a number of occasions, on number of fora, that our electronic voting machines are tamper proof, foolproof, and cannot be 
tempered at any stage. I must tell you so that uh, our voters and stakeholders remain aware that uh, every district election officer is a statutory custodian. The machine has technical security, complete technical security. Is it is mechanically secured, like if you try to open it, it will not function. From the software point of view, it is fully secured because it is programmable once only. If you try to reprogram it, it will not function. Another interesting feature is that this machine has no wire, no cable to any internet uh, point, and therefore there cannot be any communication of messages. We have complete security at the storage level. There is a complete inventory of each and every electronic voting machines. There is a complete uh, integrity during transportation. And there is a complete transparency during its use. All political parties at different stages of election process witness the electronic voting machines. They have complete access to the uh, electronic voting machines. Therefore, I would like to re reiterate, re-emphasize, and reassure stakeholders that electronic voting machines are tamper-proof. But can the same uh, reasoning that you are giving also apply to online voting? Because the Supreme Court has given certain directions for making online voting available to NRIs. What's the status on that? Will that be manipulation-free as well? And what about uh, the vision that you know all the youth at least would have that there would be online voting for one and all across the country, maybe in the medium term? The Commission has been receiving a uh, lot of representations from uh, different sections of the society, particularly overseas uh, electors, including uh, youth who are IT and uh, mobile uh, enabled. We have been considering this issue for some time, and uh, Honorable Supreme Court uh, also asked us to examine it. We examined it. We have, uh, in the context of uh, demand of NRIs, overseas electors, have already recommended uh, for appropriate legislative sanction for uh, providing one-way electronic postal ballot system to begin with for overseas electors. We have already sent the proposal, which I understand is under consideration. At our end, we have already evolved the technology. We have already evolved uh, operational guidelines. And according to our uh, technical experts, uh, the first step of uh, enabling uh, overseas uh, electors, or for that matter, maybe in long term in the country uh, would be quite uh, would be quite uh, safe to use mm -hmm. uh, we have in, we have recommended one way electronic postal ballot system okay. that is said to be reasonably uh, safe okay. uh, the committee has also recommended that uh, electronic voting uh, machine by general populace uh, would take time because it will require to address so many concerns of stakeholders, including uh, uh, foolproof technology. Mm -hmm. Because there are always uh, permutation and combination possible in uh, internet uh, technology. And therefore, that will take some time. Mm -hmm. But uh, one way electronic postal ballot should come soon uh, once it is legislated. So that's about voter facilitation and empowerment, but there are several other things which the Election Commission has to deal with. The Bihar Assembly election was a major success from the point of view of uh, the Election Commission, but there were several instances of rabble-rousing politicians making objectionable remarks and uh, resorting to objectionable actions. Could that have been prevented and can that be prevented in future? Election Commission has a very significant non-statutory document, which is called M Model, Model Code, Code of, of Conduct. Conduct. All of you know it very well. There are substantive penal provisions for such kind of activities which you just mentioned. During Bihar election, we made very effective use of both provisions. We resorted to action under Model Code of Conduct. We made uh, effective use of uh, substantive laws. and. Uh, we also appeal to political parties, appeal to candidates, appeal to star campaigners. Still there were issues. Still there was uh, use of uh, inflammatory language, uh, divisive language. And the Election Commission of India has been very, very concerned about it. By our effective action, 
in Bihar, we were able to contain it to a very significant extent. However, we have recently documented all the experiences which we encountered during Bihar elections. And uh, we have certain suggestions with us to minimize and prevent this kind of uh, behavior on the part of candidates, on the part of star campaigners, etc. And therefore, uh, the commission is uh, planning to convene an all-party meeting where we will share our ideas, where we will express our concern, and where uh, we will ask political parties to also share uh, their responsibility to ensure that there is a peaceful, cordial atmosphere during election so that th there is no political uh, animosity. When uh, can we expect that all-party meeting? In a couple of weeks' time, we will hold this party meeting. We were referring to uh, challenges uh, before the election commission in the Bihar Assembly election, but uh, five more states will be going to polls uh, this year. Are you all geared up for that? Because every state has a different set of challenges. West Bengal isn't famous for political violence during elections. Tamil Nadu, uh, there are various clandestine ways which political parties adopt to lure uh, and induce voters. Several set of challenges. Are you all geared up for that? They include uh, use of muscle power, use of money power, certain uh, geographical challenges, uh, certain demographical challenges. And uh, we are aware of these challenges. We have already begun the process of planning in these uh, five states. Uh, now we have a laid down system where we start our planning process six months in advance. We have already visited a couple of states where elections are due. We are visiting uh, remaining states very soon. So the commission is determined that uh, we will not allow any muscle man to terrorize our voter and uh, intimidate our voters. We will ensure that each and every voter is able to come to the polling station. We have a strategy for that. We have experiences of uh, Bihar election where we mounted a very effective strategy. Likewise, for uh, abuse of money power, use of allurements to influence voters, we again had a very robust strategy in Bihar where we uh, caught huge uh, amount of cash and uh, bullion and liquor and narcotics and drugs. We will further enhance that uh, strategy. We are also thinking of introducing some new IT applications okay. uh, in these states which we implemented in Bihar and there are about a dozen new applications. In your term as uh, the CEC, what are the electoral reforms that you would uh, want implemented in terms of paid news, in terms of state funding of elections or even caps on uh, expenditure by political parties or others as well? The first issue that we are very concerned about is uh, how to prevent these, this muscle power from being exercised. And uh, so therefore we have uh, made proposals that there should be decriminalization of politics. Those uh, candidates or those prospective candidates who have been charge sheeted in the court for certain offenses should not be allowed to contest. Should not be allowed to contest. Then on the abuse of money side, the abuse of money is manifested in different forms. One of the commonest uh, ways of uh, misu misuse of money is paid news and we have already proposed that it be made an electoral that offense. This should be made an electoral offense. We have our own strategy to check this uh, uh, phenomenon of uh, paid news. Then we have also said that bribing should be uh, made cognizable offense. Plus there are other uh, reforms which pertain to for example uh, uh, you mentioned in the beginning uh, uh, multiple dates for uh, to enable voters, uh, citizens to become voters. That is another area. Simplification of forms, one page form, that is another area to, to, to get it done. Now, another point of debate is compulsory voting. What is the view of the election commission? Because there are countries like Australia, Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil that have compulsory voting. The view in the commission is that uh, Number one, there is no constitutional provision uh, at present to, to make the voting compulsory. Secondly, uh, we have taken a uh, different uh, line of action. 
which is that we encourage people to come to participate. Even in a country like Australia where voting is compulsory, uh, there is always gap between uh, those who are expected to come to the polling station and those who come. And the no numbers run uh, into uh, several thousands, maybe million. Now consider our country, if we have compulsory voting with 850 million people, what if, uh, as we know from our past experience, 300 million or 30 crores people uh, did not come to vote? Mm -hmm. So what can be done about these? How many people can be penalized? There's a perception, Dr. Zaidi, about Indian elections that they are too long, too many, too expensive. If there are simultaneous Lok Sabha and Assembly elections in India, can that problem be sorted out? Well, Election Commission is in favor of uh, holding simultaneous elections to Parliament, Assembly. As a matter of fact, though it is not uh, the mandate of the Election Commission of India, but uh, uh, lawmakers can consider even uh, synchronizing Gram Panchayat, Block Level and Zilla Parishad uh, elections with Assembly and Parliamentary elections. We have already uh, testified and uh, we have already made a recommendation that uh, there should be simultaneous elections. We are concerned only with administrative arrangements and one-time investment on uh, uh, procuring electronic voting machines. Election Commission had earlier organized simultaneous elections, will organize simultaneous elections if there is a uh, consensus, consensus on this on issue. This. this is an important uh, subject on which there is a need for a debate earlier than later. And we support uh, holding simultaneous elections. That will save uh, so-called paralysis of decision making. That will uh, also prevent the unnecessary long model code of conduct period. Your brief closing comments on uh, what India can learn possibly from election management uh, models the world over, maybe one or two countries. India is a big model for large number of uh, democracies, established democracies, as well as which are emerging uh, democracies and uh, therefore uh, there are experiences which we have been uh, collecting, compiling. Uh, for example, uh, I visited uh, Georgia, a small country uh, last year. There I saw that uh, in spite of being a small uh, election commission, they have uh, formulated a strategic plan. That means to say they have a plan to work for next five to ten years, their priority is You're also preparing a vision document 2025, aren't you? Yes. So, so this is one example I wanted to mention to you that very small uh, uh, learning experience, but now we have converted it into our own ten years document. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nazim Zaidi, Thank for you. having spoken to us much. on Candid Conversation. It was a pleasure to have you on the nice show. Nice talking to you. So the message from the Election Commission is loud and clear that the body will not relent until it ensures that every single eligible voter is able to and is willing to vote and expect a lot of electoral reforms in future as well. With that, we conclude this edition of Candid Conversation. Thank you so much for watching.